We are going to find out uh, which one of these two teams is going to take the first game in the semifinals. Mid versus Viper. Like, everything loses to Viper. All right, man, just quick has level of rage. The rage. But oh, juke your way through the trees. Still oh, going to be combat disruption. And he is done for. Surrounded on all sides. Goodbye, Benjus. Who are they going to give it to? Viper, Baby Knight, will take up the first blood. Back over the bottom lane once again. King Tech is going to be gone on. They're going to keep their distance a little bit better this time around. You can see Ace uh, moves over to the right-hand side to make sure he doesn't get hit by the crush. It's the kill off the Ignite. Back over to mid lane. Kataro kind of baiting Baby Knight in, seeing if he's going to go for the dive. He will, and he'll pick up the kill him. too. Baby Knight dominating with the Viper already. Going on Stinger here, leading off with the Ignite and actually just got a Soul Catcher and try and run him down. Now the Disruption goes out, Baby Knight's here, gets out the Firefly, bumps back some of these heroes. King Tekka tries to get there as he's trying to make his off crawling a little bit better. Does manage to hit the Crush. Now Excel will be able to throw out the Paralyzing Cask and that'll be enough to be able to claim that kill, first kill of the game. Looking at that is definitely struggled. Mid lane, this is the rotation. This is a typical C9 move right here. This is perfect. Gets yeah. Stinger, brings him down before he gets closer to that Blink Dagger. They were, they're not going to be quite that fast, especially if this tier one tower in bottom lane goes down. That will finish the Blink Daggers from both these heroes, but it looks like they're going to try and catch Super Benjus. They are going to be able to get that Chronosphere, locking him in, allowing the Batrider just to beat him down. Bounce back there with Flame Break is going to be enough. A Bash, smartly timed there from Hester Joe. Gets a little lucky and stops the Infest. This is like the best chance at a comeback Infamous will have all game long. Yep. This moment, right here. Here comes the wrap from behind. There's two heroes smoked up on the side of Infamous, the Razor and the Witch Doctor. Razor is pretty squishy, though, with the only treads. All right, the initiation is actually going to start with Stinger. There is the disruption. Now the follow-up initiation out of King Tekka. They need to go for the Luna, but they miss the Crush. Still, though, they do have the Rage, but he's controlled up by a beautiful Chronosphere from Hesta Joe. Kataro's right in the middle of everything, but he doesn't have the damage to threaten anyone. They seemed like they had a plan. They're like, all right, Batrider goes first, the disruption goes down, then we go in with the Slardar, but Cloud9, they countered all of that so beautifully. Infamous not able to make much happen here, not finding any farming time either. Stinger makes his jump forward, doesn't quite get Hesta Joe, but there is a two-man crush, but the follow-up is a little bit lackluster. They're gonna go for Rise first, Benjus does manage to get that one kill, but look at the oh blade, just God. bouncing around, destroying these heroes as they try and approach the Luna. Baby Knight's taking up all this physical damage, may actually end up dying here to perhaps the Razor, Chronosphere, he ends up going down to the Maledict. Still though, that is a total wipe. Yeah, it seems like Infamous have just run out of options. Like, we know these options are not good for them. And they probably know it too, so they, they just see this is just no real good opportunities anywhere. With uh, the Viper getting boots. Back, back line, they do manage to pick up uh, Rise to start with, but a bash on to Benjus. He's not going to make it out, neither is King Tekka tried to go for the TP. <laughs> and uh, open wounds on an Alpha Wolf. All right, there's two cores for a support. Cloud9 don't even have to make the decision for that one. They just simply clean up what Infamous have presented them. They get a free kill on a Witch Doctor as well. Now the buybacks yeah, start coming in. in. I think it's the right play. Yeah, yeah. Infamous, they got to keep their morale up somehow. They got to get out of this game real quick if they want to have a chance at being able to win this series. They got to just wipe this one from their memory. I think yeah. it was just uh, <laughs> too many, too many deaths. They've got an Ember and a Lifestealer as well as the Meepo. So Support Meepo. Wait, Baby Knight? Oh, oh, nice body blocking there from Rice. He's actually going to turn on to Stinger. Stinger might be dead. He actually does have an opportunity to be able to get off the heal, and it is going to be Rise who dies. Baby Knight comes in, cleans up that one, but King Tekka might still be able to get this one. He has the mango. Four seconds until oh the strike is up. Baby Knight's just a little bit the faster. Trying to juke it up. The self goes down. King Tekka, one hit, not oh quite enough. God. A second hit is needed. Oh, no, he misses the chain, oh, he's but slower, he's, he's still slower. good. Baby Knight is much faster. They may actually just lose a tier two and gain nothing for it. Cloud9 going to be able to up for this. Telekinesis. They have the Burrow Strike as well, ready to go. And it's going to start off on Benjus. He pops his ultimate. Now they come in with the stun, be able to slow him down, make sure he doesn't actually get that movement speed away. Nuke comes out. Noya is the target. What a beautiful ice path into Baby Knight coming in with a three-man curse. He does manage to hit multiple heroes, but they get off the shell grave. Bro Strike for Bro Strike, controlling up Ace. He's controlling as to Joe as well inside with the Infest. They barely keep Baby Knight. Managed to kill the Golem even. King Tekka, They're it's all, so all up low. to him, but he doesn't have much. One Bro Strike coming up. Sandstorm looking for it. Tries to go for has to Joe. He really wants this one kill, thinks better of it, managed to go for the Rubik instead, but that's the hero they, didn't, they cared the least about. Cloud9 managed to keep wow. three other heroes. Slide of Fist Chains combination missing out there. Stinger is instead going to be the target. He's trying to make it to a shrine of his own, doesn't get hit by the Ice Path. 
and may have to shell a grave himself just in time. Shrine waiting, holding, heads to Joe. Uh-oh, looks like Infamous, they're going to be in trouble here. The SF, the Shrine a little bit more. He stays alive. The Epicenter isn't enough. Now he's getting off the ultimate and heads to Joe. He turns and he can't win the fight. Ice Path goes down. Another heal. Kataro, he's still alive through all this. Finally, the nuke comes in and the explosion goes out, wiping out the heroes. Ace will finish this. He comes in, gets two. At this point, this Meepo about to be level 25. Uh-oh, King Tekka, not again. King Tekka caught in, managed to get the jump away. They get the stun onto Baby Knight, but he actually gets four staff over the cliff. That's no good. Infamous, they're stuck now with Kataro. Has this nasty Hester Joe rotten right on top of him, and he managed to keep the rage long enough to be able to dodge all that magic damage, and he'll just clean up the SF at his leisure. Same goes with the Centaur. Stun no up, buyback. surrounded by Ace. He goes for the attempted kill onto the Meepo, just won't be able to get it in time, it looks like. But the epicenter might just be enough. King Tekka does manage to pick up that one kill. Has to Joe, he was so low, but he managed to get the armlet toggle, and now it's going to be King Tekka. Cloud9 have just corralled Infamous entirely inside of their own base and just waiting for a certain pickoff to happen. Ben just dropping pretty low. Maybe that's the pick they need. Ice Path onto two. Nice play by Noya. Now the jump forward. Ace managed to catch the Dazzle in the back line. No chance for Shell Grave here. They're controlling up Ace pretty well. They're going to buy back on the Dazzle as well, trying to save these heroes. But Ace is bursting through them so quickly. The supports are dropping, but Ace is finally going to lose that first life. Meanwhile, the SF managed to dance away from Hesta Joe at their opportunity for Cloud9 on round two. Throw a strike out. Infamous drops their ultimates. SF trying to throw down that damage on Ace. They do finally manage to bring him down. It'll cost the Centaur's life, or maybe not. The Shallow Grape comes in, and it's actually Hester Joe who dies instead. Infamous somehow managed to hold against an Aegis level 25 Beepo at 29 minutes, not just holding, but managing to pick up a huge number of extra kills. Looks like Noya is going to be the fourth casualty of War Cloud 9. Benjaz's build Ooh. is owning. Yeah, I was, I'd was. i heard about the Radiance builds, and then I have gotten like a couple pubs with Sumail, and he was playing it, and I, he went Maelstrom every game. So I was like, oh, okay, I guess that's the... That's the build. Uh -oh. King Tekka initiating Centaur. up on Noya. Noya is uh, definitely a big kill here. The Joan might just die as well. King Tekka does manage to get him the Yules. Sets up with the Burrow Strike. And easy, easy kill. Yeah. Oh, oh this Kotaro is nasty. Won. Baby Knight runs right into Kotaro, pops the BKB. Nice. Two man bro strike. They're trying to go for Baby Knight, and they will have him too. Hester Joe pops out because of that one, but now he's going to be caught by the Yule Scepter. King Tekka buys his time with the Sandstorm. Hester Joe looks for some way to juke this one out, but he's just not going to make it. The rage fades, and now they'll get their combination of stuns. With the damage coming out from Kotaro, Infamous actually do pick up that kill. Yeah, and now it's when uh, Kotaro. The Shadow Fiend is going for the full oh, Daedalus. Straight King Tekka does manage to stop these Meepos. They catches them right before the poof actually goes out. They're going to have a second round attempt here, but a Yule Scepter will stop one of them. That's exactly the play you want to see from King Tekka. Oh, oh but it still gets out. No way. The Poison Touch? Poison? 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 20? 24? 10? He's dead. It's dead. Ah! <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. You're way too happy about Meepo dying. Oh, I just It's the way he dies, dude. He died to Poison Touch. Like, come on. And Benjus is right there to be able to hit the combo stun. Keep Hester Joe Rotten in place. Top lane's being pushed in, poke and prodded by Cloud9. They're gonna go for Kataro using that rage, but immediately have to back themselves away as the ice path goes down. Tier 3 tower is gone, but at the same time, top lane Rax is under attack. Infamous just seem to be fully set on objectives. They're, they're gonna going go for, for the tier the 4 towers. They're gonna try and force this completely. Ice path hits on three, stalling things up quite significantly. Ace realizes he has to make his way back, but a tier 4 tower is already gone. One lane Rax gone at bottom. Noya does manage to stay ahead of that stomp. They're gonna go in for Infamous. Kataro is going to be target, but once again, Hester Joe Rotten is forced back. A nice ice path, but King Tekka managed to get the catch. Nice force staff into the shrine. They're going to be able to keep him alive. Epicenter down. They get the dazzle on the side. BKB, Satanic, heal up to full on Kataro as he focuses down Ace. They get him with the golem, and he will drop. A buyback now. They have to be able to get the heroes of Infamous out of their base. They have to be able to punish. Ace is sitting here on the side with his Meepo looking for his initiation. Benches, he's dropping low. So is Kataro, but he also has the Aegis, so Ace is in feeling comfortable making that jump. Bro strike in. Now he makes the jump forward, but a centaur stop. The perfect timing. Benjus still goes down, but Ace turns, 
tries to go for Kataro, lids lose you the ultimate, it's just not going to be enough. He ends up going down as soon as the Shallow Grave is out. Maybe he can kill Ace. Ace dropping low. Key. Satanic Tenet comes in. Satanic. Ace. Oh, no. Ace goes down, but so does Kataro. Kataro immediately buys back. He sees the opportunity to end this game while Ace is down for two minutes straight. Cloud9, they need to be able to catch Benjes here and now before he has to back up with his allies. He pops his Stampede. Hesha Joe is here. They get him with he's the Ice Path. They might be able to get him with the Stampede. And, oh, Benjes, he's too far out here. He doesn't have to back up his team, and he goes down. He's dead for two minutes now. Mass TP's in, so they are going to make this go on to Benjes. He is a bit too far out, and his allies are not close enough. Benjes can survive for a while. There goes the Stampede, but they didn't actually have anything to be able to hold him in place. Now they're going to be able to get the counter. Epicenter being charged up, peeing Tekka right in front of the Meepo's face. They can't bring Ace down in a second here. 90 seconds down. Infamous. They move forward now. Catch another. Yule Scepter on to Hester Joe. Has the rage. Not in time, though. Infamous. TP. Whoa, what's this TP? What's this TP? Noya, what's happening? King Tekka. Burrow Strike, is this an immediate pickup? Noya, he gets Yule Scepter, does have a Hurricane Pike, needs the help, does manage to get to the low ground. Now they jump in. They've already targeted the SF. They've managed to Scythe Vice him up. They need some magic damage, and they're going to be able to have a King Tekka. He gets off the Epicenter, but the SF is dropped. It's just an Aegis, though. Ace, they need a way to be able to deal with round two of Kataro, but he's already down. Ace is dropped, and so does the Centaur. Jesus. Poor Kataro with the Divine Rapier rips Cloud9 apart. Oh, so Jesus, put that is away. a lot of damage from Baby Knight. He's getting a good amount here. King Tekka does win. Oh, Ice Path actually will stop the damage coming out from Kataro just in time. Baby Knight needs to be able to get some distance, though. Doesn't get controlled up. And Kataro heals himself up to full off the Satanic. A little bit missed. Goes after goodly time. But King Tekka comes in. Another Burrow Strike on the Baby Knight. Good amount of damage on these heroes. Kataro's actually dropping lower and lower. If they get a little bit more, stop the cheese. But he gets it off just in time. The other heroes are dropped low. Stinger could be a good target for Baby Knight to go on. But he's running out of spirits. Actually just gets dropped. The Poison Touch. Poison that touch. one stun was just enough. And Kataro, three more seconds till he has Satanic back up. He can heal himself up to full in a second. They need to be able to get a disable. They need to get the damage down, but Kataro heals himself up to full once again. Baby Knight, he can claim one, at least King Tekka, but he can get dropped again, and that should be it. Cloud9, it was a long hold. They almost managed to take this game number two and close out the series. Ruby and Hope alive. Hell yeah, finals. game three, let's go. I definitely want to see a game three. Absolutely.